video and I'm gonna close this. Okay, I started another video. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah, we thank you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. We glorify your name this morning, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace. We worship you this morning. No matter what the enemy is trying to do, we worship you this morning. Hallelujah. We glorify you this morning. Hallelujah. We take authority over everything in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Right now, Jesus. We destroy every attack of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. We come against you, Satan, in Jesus' name. You will not interfere with this word. Yes, God. Pull link angels. He don't want the people of God to hear what God is getting ready to do. He, I know he doesn't. We cancel every word spoken against the people of God this morning. Blood of Jesus, wash us and make us whole. My maker and our father have mercy on us and deliver us from satanic pronouncements this morning. God and father arrest and paralyze every evil tongue raised against us in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost fire locate and paralyze every tongue falling, pulling us down in the name of Jesus. Every word being spoken against us this morning be cast down. Let it come to naught in Jesus' name. Let it come to nothing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We notify your words in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. Holy Ghost fire paralyzed every evil world program into the sun, the moon, the stars to limit our destiny this morning. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost fire paralyzed to reduce our life this morning. Every word, Father God, spoken against us and our family members this morning, God, in the name of Jesus, will never make it in life. It will never come to pass in the name of Jesus. Receive the fire and be canceled. Every word spoken by any man or woman that has spoke anything evil against us, Father, knowingly or unknowingly, will never make good, receive fire, and be canceled. We cancel every negative word that's been spoken over us. Anything that's been said that is not of God, we cancel it this morning. We cancel it this morning. You a liar, Satan. You come to steal, kill, and destroy. But, Father, we thank you that you come to give life and give it more abundantly. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. I'm just sharing the broadcast again. Hallelujah. We thank you this morning. 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 We magnify you this morning. We glorify you this morning. We give you all the honor and glory this morning. We thank you, Father God. We come against the enemy that's interfering with the internet in the name of Jesus right now, Father. We thank you for the blessings of the Lord. Make it rich and added no sorrow to it. We thank you, Father, because you said you're going to pour us out a blessing that we have not enough room to receive. God, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. You said the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not one. God, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you for what the enemy's trying to do. It will not succeed in the name of Jesus. It will not come to pass. It will not work in the name of Jesus. It will not work today. I thank you for removing by your spirit and pouring out a blessing over your people in the name of Jesus like you never did before, Father. I pray, Father God, that we already spoke that this month is going to be a blessed month, a month of miracle signs and wonders and we thank you for the signs and wonders that you're doing in our lives, oh God. Even though it might be a little thing, it's a big thing. Father, it's a big thing. Hallelujah. It is a big thing because anything you do is big. Hallelujah. Anything God does is big. He does nothing little. Hallelujah. For the suffering of our work. And I, I'm telling you, we, are, we may be suffering right now, but you're not going to keep suffering. God has a time for your deliverance, a time, an appointed time for your deliverance. And he's going to do what he say he's going to do. He's going to do it. He is going to do what he said he's going to do. We got to trust him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. He has an appointed time. Appointed time for your deliverance. Hallelujah. That's what I hear him saying. I have an appointed time for your deliverance. God was, okay, all week we were talking about the Lord didn't want to say it to stop gossiping. Then the Lord was talking about the gossiping. Then the Lord was talking about forgiveness. We need to forgive. Because we was holding unforgiveness and we needed to let it go. Every day God's been leading us to this point because he wanted us to get ourselves together so he can pour us out a blessing we have enough room to receive. 
We got to be thankful. We got to be grateful. When somebody's blessing you and you don't think that you, you, you're uh, uh, honor, you're honorable and you just, you, you're getting it because you're just who you are. No, you better thank God that God thought enough about you to even allow somebody to bless you or, or even, even plant a seed in your life. I'm grateful for every time you guys give. Even if it's for me or for somebody else, I am grateful and I'm asking God to bless you a hundredfold because we got to be grateful. Sometimes we think it, that's, the, that's their duty. No, it's nobody's duty to do anything. <clears throat> they're doing it out of the kindness of their heart and they're doing it because they love God. And they're doing it because they're obedient to God. Obedient is better than sacrifice. And when you obeying God, baby, I'm telling you, I'm telling you from my own experience, when you obey God, God will do the most extremely ab abundant, the most impossible things in your life because of your obedience. He cares more about your obedience than anything. It's obedience that he's looking for. And he's looking for obedience. He's looking for obedience. My God, he's looking for obedience. That's what he's looking for. That the people of God will obey and do what he says. God is going to do something today. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there's going to, there's divine blessings that are coming to your, to, to your own doorstep. Because remember, God knows your address. He knows where you live. He knows everything about you. Everything. Nothing go past God. Nothing. That's why anything you do behind closed door, God sees. That's why we got it. You got to be holy and saved. In front of people and you got to be holy and saved when you're not in front of people because they what people don't see God sees he's watching and he's taking an account of everything that's being done he's writing it down and I promise you it's gonna come and tell you where you went wrong at it's gonna happen he's got it written down so we we got to repent every day and ask God for, to forgive us for all our sins because God is keeping an account of everything if the enemy, like yesterday, we were talking about your enemies, uh, a Bible study. We talked about the enemies. What God said, uh, God answered Samuel's prayer. We were talking about God answered Samuel's prayer. So God, and Samuel prayed and God answered him. And all of the enemies that were trying to attack him, all of the enemies that came after him, God destroyed them. He put so much fear in them that they, and they killed 30,000 Israelites back then. Okay, so I'm what I'm saying is whatever was going on back then is going on now. You you're going to have enemies, but I promise you that God is a He will defeat every single enemy in your life. God sees the heart and true motives behind a person. Yes, He does. Yes, He does. And I'm telling you, we better open our eyes because we don't want to believe that there's church witches in the church. I know God spoke to me and told me. And I know when he speaks to me and I hear him well. He told me there, are, there were witches coming in the church. They're going to be looking like they're part of the church, but they're not of the church. I'm, I know what he told me. And I ain't backing down from that. Yes, and a, a rebellion is a sin of witchcraft, but I'm not talking about that part. I'm talking about there are some real witches in the church. Okay, they're there. They're in there. And you, you, me, and everybody on here, gonna, we're going to ask God to open our eyes that we may see behind the veil. Okay? Behind the fake and the phony. Ask for discernment and wisdom every day. Everything that glitters is not. It's not. But we want to say, oh, no, that's not what it is. No, I know what it is. I know what it is. I'm a seer. Because some people see and don't say. I'm a seer and I say. God gave me the bonus to call it out and let you know what's going on. I'm a seer and I say. That's me. I don't let that stuff pass me. I can personally say that I have con conversed with a witch and a church. You see what I'm saying? A USB. I know. They're in the house. I'm telling you they're in the house. And we want to sugarcoat it and say, oh, no. You know, no, no, no. Yeah, they're there. I promise you they're there. And I'm going to tell you, like we, like we read two or three weeks ago about the devil knows how to use miracles. He can do miracles too. They can do miracles and signs and wonders. If, if, you, if they really studied the book, 23 Minutes in Hell, 
He came to cast us free. Revelation of hell. If they really study the people that actually went to hell and the people that actually went through something, they might learn something. And stop being deceived and thinking that everybody that comes in the house of God is saved. They're not. Some of them are in there to destroy the church. To destroy the church. Okay? Sheep and wolf clothing. I mean, wolf and sheep clothing. They, they, they wolves. They're not coming to do you good. And we got to know who they are. That's why I stay by myself. I stay to myself. I stay home. I stay home. I don't go nowhere. My grandson said, y'all just scared to go out because he, it's not, I'm not scared to do anything. That's one thing I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of nothing and I'm not afraid to do anything. So that's a lie. I ran to those worst pilots. That's, fear is not a problem for me. But I like if I can avoid being out and staying home at peace, Reading the word and listening to, to gospel. That's what I'm going to do. I go out when I need to go out. I don't just go out because I just want to go out. I'm very led by God. There's times that God just make, lead me to just stay home. Don't do nothing. Don't go nowhere. Just sit down. Sit. Be still. And I will do that. Because that's wisdom. We want to just run around here and just do whatever we want to do. We can't do that. Because you don't know what trap the enemy has for you. And I'm telling you, he come to distract his people. So what Rebecca said was correct. This witch said, she never says Jesus. There you go. Only God and gets by in church. Exactly. Because they cannot say Jesus. They cannot say Romans 9 and 10. They cannot say that Jesus died. They cannot say that he died. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ had died for you and you shall be. They can't do it. That's what you want to know. If there's a witch in your house, ask them to say that. I guarantee you they won't say Jesus. They can't do it. God bless you, Florinda. God bless you, uh, uh, Pastor Florinda. They can't do it. And then we walk around here so they see. They talk about God, 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 God. Let me hear you say some Jesus. Let me hear you. Let me hear the word Jesus come out your mouth a couple of times. Let me hear you say Jesus a couple of times. Let me see if you're real. Because I'm telling you, they're out there. God wouldn't tell me that if they're not there. They're there. Tell them to read nine, uh, Romans 9 and 10. If thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, that he believe in thy heart, and God have raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Tell them to read that. I guarantee you a witch is not going to be able to read that, and she's not going to be able to rehearse that scripture. They can say God, because you know what? Satan called himself a God, but they cannot claim Jesus. And I'm going to tell you right now, I done seen a couple of them. I know who they are. God ain't told me to say nothing. And I'm not. But I know who they are. You may be fooling some of the congregation, but you're not fooling me. But God gave me an eye to see. And I thank him. It's, I'm, this is not being bold or being boastful. I thank him. Because there was a time in my life I couldn't see nothing. I was blind as a bat. Running around here with sinners, doing, a, you know, and I'm not saying that we're not supposed to be around sinners. We, 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 we can be around sinners, but we, you know, don't make it, don't make it, don't make them your best friend. Don't make them your best friend. We, we are to uh, 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 counteract with them, you know, show them love. But don't be, be their best buddies. They going to the nightclub and you going too. They going out to drink and you going too. No. No. The devil is sneaky and cunning. I know he got telling he got me like that. I was going to the nightclub. I started out small. And then I got entangled. And then it took me, I told y'all this before, it took me 10 years to get out of that hell hole. You cannot go into the enemy's camp and think that it's not going to affect you. Oh, it's going to affect you one way or another. You can't go into the enemy's camp. Holiness is right. But what we do is as, as saints and Christians, what I what I watch them do, because I'm telling you I did it, they, they turn around and they they take God's word and apply it to benefit them. And we cannot do that because he said his word is the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word is not going to change for you. He's not going to change for you. This is what his word says, and you got to believe his word, and you got to do his word. 
but we want to change his word. And I'm saying it because I did it. So I know it's, I know, I know that people do it. I know they do it. Yes, because he's coming. He's coming. And please, some of these people are going to get caught doing the wrong thing. And I'm telling you, it's not going to be a good thing. It's not going to be good. He's going to catch them. He's going to catch them. He's going to catch them. And it's not going to be good. My little daughter did my hair yesterday. Oh, God. I, I, I'm, I'm a simple person. I like my hair the same way every day. So she came over here yesterday because she knew she, I'm going out of town. She said, I'm finna do your hair for you. I'm so thankful. She's a beautician, and I thank you. She did my hair, and I thank God for her. I really wanted her to put a weave in, but she said, no, she ain't got time for that. <laughs> so I thank God for that. I don't know why I'm just telling y'all this. She just blessed me, so I'm, I thank God for the blessing. Little blessings like that. You see what I'm saying? That was a little blessing, but it was a blessing for me. We got to start thanking God for the little things that he's doing. What has he done for somebody this week? I know he's done something. What has he done this week for somebody? Do anybody got a testimony this week? What did he do? I know he did something because he did some stuff for me. He did something. It says, and please know the word is watching and they are looking for for something different and they recognize and appreciate yes they do the true church of the people yes they do thank you she did it i asked her to do it but i'm gonna tell y'all right now it ain't gonna be up here long <laughs> my daughter said you ain't gonna keep that in for you're gonna keep it in for like a day or two she already know but i thank god i thank god because the world is watching they watching they watching how we act. They watching us to see when we're going to slip. And some of them, some of them are hoping we fall. They hoping we fall, but we're not going to fall. We're not going to fall. We're going to be steadfast and unmovable. They say, yes, the world has us under a mic. Yes, they do. Because they, they want to see something so they can say something. People still judging me for my past. Do I care? No. Because that's let me know you're an immature Christian. If you're still looking at me, excuse me, for the, from the past, what happened to me in the past, what's done in the past, then you are an immature, I don't care if you're a leader, you're an immature, and you need to go to God and ask God to put the light on you so you can get some forgiveness in your heart. Because it doesn't matter. Because everybody has a... Everybody has something that they've done and they pass. But when you don't fall, they appreciate you for being true and steadfast. And that's why I come in here and I be, be real. I don't, I don't come in here and be fake. I be real. Because the, I know the devil is a blackmailer. So you ain't going to be blackmailing me. That's why I come in here and tell the truth. That's why I didn't come on Tuesday because I told you I ate that nasty fish and then I broke out. My mouth broke out. My daughter's mouth broke out, and I will not go back there. And I called that man yesterday and told him about it, and he came up with a thousand new excuses and stuff. But we got doctor's note, baby. It came from your place, your restaurant. The doctor said it. You know? So I told the truth because I didn't want nobody else. Well, she was sinning. She didn't come. No, no. I, I'm telling you. Well, y'all know when I do something, I tell y'all. Like I told you about the woman in the car was acting crazy, talking about some who you blowing your horn at. I'm blowing it at you, boo. What? What am I supposed to like back down from Satan? I blew the horn at you. Yes, I did. At you. And she started cussing and calling me all kinds of names. And I said, suffer which not to live. And I plead the blood of Jesus. And I told her, ma'am, you having a bad day. And. You know, and I said, I'm praying for you. And then she got, she got quiet after that. I'm praying for you. But my grandson was putting on his sneakers. And he said, my daughter said, well, what you going to do? She got out of her car. I said, I was going to get out of my car. What you mean? If she get out of her car, I'm going to get out of mine. What am I supposed to do? She ain't coming to my car window. We cannot be afraid of the enemy. You understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm making a point. Don't be afraid of him because he's a bully. He's a bully and he's going to do and say whatever he want to say to try to make you back down from him. Simple, a simple thing like that to back down from him. 
Who are you? That's why I don't play them kind of games. People already know. They know how I am. I've been like this all my life. I don't play them kind of games. I don't care if you're a church or not church. Don't come for me like, like that crazy. I, I might, you know, I, I, if God sits on me, you might get a pass. God bless you, Pastor uh, Cynthia. You might get a pass. But I ain't that kind of pastor where you could just get in my face and stuff. I'm not that, I'm not that one. I'm still being processed. I'm being processed. I had a conversation with some leaders. And when you ask someone, are you having a bad day? Do you need a breather? Let me see. Do you need a breather? It says most people change their way because it makes them focus on their behavior. Yeah, and then they front. Like, okay, we, we, we front like we, we don't get mad. We're leaders and we don't get mad. We don't have bad days. We don't have days that in our mind we want to punch somebody in the face. We want to put on this big front that these things don't happen. It does, okay? It does. It, 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 there's days where you might come across somebody and you'd be like, oh, God, I'm, I'm just glad I'm saved because if I wasn't saved, I would snatch them by the back of their neck. There are days like that. And we want to back like, oh, no, we're just so holy. We're so holy. I, you know, I'm going to tell you something. Yesterday, I... I um. Hold on a second. Yesterday, I I, 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 I was in the car and I, I, I kind of, I slipped and said the word ass. I sure did. A-S-S is in the Bible. But, honestly, um, I told God to forgive me, but I kind of felt like sometimes people just, people are just too religious for me. Like they don't do no wrong. Like they do no wrong. They're, they're so religious that they don't have no faults. They don't fall. Because the same mercy God showed you when you fell, that's the same mercy we got to show people. But I'm not saying go out here and um don't go out here and do things on purpose. You understand? Because then now you're sin, you're willfully sinning. I'm saying there's times that you're going to slip up and do certain things. That's what I'm saying. But people want to sit up here. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, uh, Mar Mar it says Mar Martel Cole. God bless you. But people want to act like they're more holy. We ain't, listen, we ain't go, we ain't made it, and we're not going to make it to Jesus come back. That's when you're going to make it, when he come back. He ain't here. You can fall seven times, but you better get up. You can fall seven times, but you better get up. You better get up. Don't stay down. Get yourself, dust yourself off and get up. Because the enemy is betting that you fall and don't come back up. Yesterday, I'm going to tell you, I was on Bible study. Nobody was on there. And I was like, oh, Lord, okay, nobody's coming. It was just me and, the, uh, and Facebook. I was just sitting there and sitting there. And I was like, okay, Lord, if nobody's coming, I'm going to get off of here. The enemy was trying to discourage me from not teaching. It says, I struggle with saying that word and all other words. I stop, but I keep asking God to take that word. See? It's, 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 it's part of life, but we've got, we gotten so religious and so holy in front of people. We get all this holy in front of people, but I'm keeping it real. I ain't holy every day. I'm, I try my best. Okay. I do. For most part, I am living holy every day, but there are days that it don't be like that. There are days I may have an attitude. I may be tired. And when I'm tired, I, I, when I'm tired, I'm not to be messed with when I'm tired. I, I, I think I'm not the only one. I know there's other people. When I get tired, leave me alone because I'm telling you, I'm going to be like the, the, the uh, Christmas Grinch. Especially when I'm tired. I'll be like the Christmas Grinch. Leave me alone. Back up off me because you do not want it. Just let me get, just let me close my eyes for five, ten minutes, an hour, and then we, we, we good. But when I'm tired and exhausted... That's the wrong time to mess with me. For real. I'm just being honest. You know, but by the grace of God, I have been doing good. I'm doing good. I am. I ain't going to lie. I, by the grace of God, not by my own grace, but by the grace of God, I'm doing good. God is keeping me and I'm thanking. Oh, I'm, he's keeping me, y'all. He's keeping me, y'all. My mind is on the Lord. 
is on the Lord. My mind is not on no club, on no sex. On, my mind is on the Lord. I'm focused on the Lord because I want to make it in. I do not want to get left down here. But you are self-aware to step away from people. Yes. 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 And when, and when I'm around some people that they just curse every word come out of their mouth, I'll be like, Lord, I don't even want to be around this. You know, I, I just don't even want to be around it because I know it took me a long time to get come out of that. Whether it was my own habit, whether it was my own unawareness, it took me a long time to get out of that, y'all. It was it, it took me a long time. And I'm telling you, I I I telling you, I know, um, Pastor Sa uh, 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 Prophet Sandra, I know it's hard. I've been through it. I, I struggle with it. I fasted. I prayed. I pleaded with God. I begged God. But somebody told me, it's it's you. You, you just got to make a decision not to do it. But it was still hard because how do you just not do it when you're doing it, when you've been doing it all along? Because before I got saved, I, I was I cursed like a sell. I was like a seller, like a Navy seller. Every word came out of my mouth was a bleep, 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 bleep. bleep. So now I'm saved. God took some things, but not all things. And I'm still dealing with the cursing. It's real. But we are so holy that we were so religious that we, you know, we don't curse. We're just, we're, we're saved. Man, what, okay, you may not curse, but you're doing something. You're talking about people. What are you doing? You're drinking. You're doing something. Sin is sin. Ain't no little and big sin. All sin is sin. I can't look at her and say she's fornicating and she's sinning. And I'm over here cursing. It's the same. God don't see it no different. It ain't no big or little. There's no big or little sin. Sin is sin. And you have to make your own self aware of it. And you got to work on yourself to get, get, get out of the sin. You have to do that. And thank you, um, uh, uh, Prophet Sandra, for, for blessing today, for, for, for your giving. I, I sent it out to the person early this morning, so thank you so much. I'm praying a, a, for each return, a hundredfold return. That's what I've been saying to God. I, I need you to bless my hundredfold return. And Father God, don't, don't do, it, do it quickly. Return it back to them. Return it back to them. Return it back to them. Amen? Return it back. Because... It's more blessed to give than to receive. It is. That was me, and I stayed at the altar. He took all, all other words, but when my kids pissed me off, the A word slips out. <laughs> and he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Trust me. He's going to do it. It's hard. It's a hard. If y'all never been, if, if, if you ever been a cursor and, 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 and you trying to stop cursing, man, it took me years to get out. I, I mean years, for real. Years, just like the club, years. And it says, I already returned it. Someone gave, look at, look at that. Look at that. She just gave this morning. God already returned it back. You see what I'm telling you? Don't tell me God is a, he's a good God. He's a good God. My God, he's a good God. We got to trust him with everything that we have. We got to trust him. I'm telling you, you guys are my motivators. I love you guys. You guys motivate me. I, I can't wait till the woman's thing start. It's going to be at, um, at 6 o'clock, I believe I said. Between 6 or, uh, six or 7. I don't know yet. I'm going to put it on there. But I can't wait. Because the, what your, the signs that God is showing you already, you, you, you just wait. He's going to move like he never moved before. You're going to see the blessings of the Lord pour down. It's going to rain on you. I promise you. I'm telling you what I'm seeing in this place. It's going to rain down on you. It's going to rain down. God is magnificent and awesome. Yes, he is. Deuteronomy 28 and 2 says, And all of these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of thy Lord. That's all he's asking you to do is be obedient. If you are obedient and hearken unto his voice of the Lord thy God, that's all he's asking for. It said, why coming from work driving a guy walked in front of my car and I said, everybody not from California. They, let me see. Wait a minute. 
It says day, okay, okay, let me read. Day before then, a guy on a bike almost hit my car. No bike lane and said, I am going the fast. It said, I am going the fast. I can't what? <laughs> oh, my God. Get on the sidewalk. You get hurt. God already died for our sins, and he knows. It says, our hearts, so don't judge. Exactly. We, 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 we just got to every day do what you need to do for yourselves. We, we, we can't go around here judging people because we, we're not perfect. And, and just because I'm saying there's witches in the church, don't say witches can be, uh, they, can't, they can't repent and turn to God. So even though they're in a church, we still got to show love, but you got to be careful. You got to still be watchful because God, the devil might have sent them in there, but God might have a different plan because see, God knows the heart. So God may be sent, the devil might be sending in the mirror to do something wrong, but God may turn around and save them, sanctify them and fill them with the Holy Ghost. And then what? Because see, God has a plan. He does. His plan is he loves everybody. He gives, he gave his life for everyone. Every sinner, every, every, every warlock, every witch. He gave his life for them. He did. And he doesn't want them to go to hell, but it's their choice to either come to Christ or stay where they're at. So there are people that you know, there are people that I know that's not going to make it in. Sadly, it is what it is. We, we, that's why we're preaching now and teaching them to get right because sadly, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. There's going to be people that's not going to make it in because they just choose not to serve the Lord. If somebody is not born again, they just need to repent, come into what's a deeply repented heart. We know that we are, some of us are sinners. Patricia, God bless you, God bless you. We just need to repent and give our life over to Jesus and confess that Jesus is our Lord and personal Savior. We just got to believe God and accept the things that God is going to do for us because he's going to do exceedingly abundantly. He told me this morning, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. I'm telling you guys, I live by faith daily. I live by faith daily. I'm telling you, that's the only way I know how to live. From the time I've been saved to now, that's how God had me living by faith. That's all I know what to do. That's all I don't know how to do it any other way. I don't know if that's what the way he, he taught me, but that's the only way. Every day I live by faith. What happened yesterday happened yesterday. Today is a new day. Every day is a new day. Today's blessings are not yesterday's blessing. God's blessings are new every morning. So every morning you get a new blessing. He, he, don't, he ain't going to reach out to the old blessing. Every day there's a new blessing. Amen. We worship and adore you, our Father, because you are the one who gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. You guys were sowing seed to someone who needed it. That was a blessing. To me, that's a blessing when you you pour you you give it to someone who needs. It's a blessing. No matter how we look at it, it's a blessing. It says you are the one who gives seed to the sower. He gives you the seed. He God bless you. He gives you the seed, and then it's up to you to do the seed. Yes, we gotta live one day at a time. Yes, yeah, she said, I thank God for favor. Yes. You got you 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 sow the seed and then God turns around and bless you, you know. Sometimes we went, ah, that's all I got, that's all I got. But if God if God speaks to you and say, give, say, I'm just this is just an example. God will say, give that hundred, and I you be like, oh my God, this is my last hundred dollars, Lord. Are you serious, Lord? You want me to give this hundred dollars, and what am I gonna do if I ain't gonna get it? You know, we start we start talking in our mind. The Lord will supply our daily needs. Yes, God bless you, Apostle uh, Julie Komar. We're blessed to be a blessing. Yes. So the enemy will start talking to you like, man, you get that last $100, what you going to do? You ain't going to have no gas money. You ain't going to be And I'm going to tell you, God will turn around. You give, you, you do it anyway. You'll be like, ooh, I'm going to do it because God said do it. Then turn around, God will turn around and bless you with $1,000. Because God don't never give what you give. He gives more. So when you're giving... Hundred dollars, he turned around and gives you a thousand dollars. That's just God, how God is. He's big. We got to start thinking big. He's not a little God. He's a big God. I ain't gonna lie. I was sitting there thinking to my my Lord, I gotta get this hotel room. This hotel is expensive. The God said, "Look, 
You do what I tell you to do, and I'll take care of the rest. But the enemy will have you think it. Because let me tell you something. Some of you are going to be in the ministry. Some of you are going to have to travel. Some of you are going to have to go to places. And you're going to have to walk by faith. You're going to have to believe God. Whether it's in your bank account or not, you're going to have to believe God. And let me tell you. It came from an unexpected person. I was like, Lord, I really don't have that. Like, you know. My grandson got some money. His daddy gave him some money. And he said, Nana, you can have half of it. There's, there's the money for, my, um, for, for the room. You can have half of it, Nana. You see what I'm telling you? We, we, it comes from unexpected sources. I never thought it would come from him. Not for, he's 15. He's 15. But he wasn't selfish. He was like, you know what? Okay, it says, hi, Patricia, did you want to come on in here? It says, did, uh, did you want to come in to speak? I'll let you in if you want to come in. It, 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 um, God bless you. It shows that you, you want to come in. I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to let you in. Exactly. I had to get, get delivered from that because in the natural, I am a detailed plan project manager. And that, let me see. Uh, project manager and that uh, that's not faith you have to rely on God you have to rely on God you really do you have to rely on God and I you know I was just like okay I sat all day looking 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 trying to find the least expensive try to find I could find nothing expensive the least expensive it is what it is and uh I said okay I give and came from an un a, 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 a resource that I wasn't even thinking it was going to come from. But that's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God. We serve that kind of God. You got to live every day. Just like the birds. They don't, they don't worry about if they're going to eat. Because somebody going to drop something out there for them to eat. Me. Every time I eat an apple, I throw it out there. I throw it out there. I don't know. Uh, 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 wait a minute. Pastor Roberts is calling me. Oh, my God. Hold on. I don't know. I'm on my lot. Uh, uh, Pastor Cynthia, can you, uh, uh, can you send him a message and tell him I'm on live? Because I can't answer it because it's going to knock you guys off. I appreciate it. Just tell him I'm, I'm still on the live. For him to call me right now, I hope it's nothing serious. Oh, God. Father, I thank you for whatever it is, Lord. It's nothing serious. Father, I thank you for blessing him right now. God, cover him with the blood of Jesus. Protect him, God. Protect him right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Whatever is going on, Father God, you bless him right now. Bless him right now. Bless him right now. Bless him right now. Give him peace, God, and comfort him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because I don't know what it could be. You know, he's calling. He's calling. But anyway, Father, we thank you. We 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 gotta be we gotta be walk by faith every day. Every day we walk by faith and not by sight. We can't. I mean, cause I'm telling y'all, I'm telling, I'm telling y'all. I was getting unemployment for a little while, then the unemployment stopped, and I'm telling you, God has been sending me blessings from people that I would never thought that would do it because I just keep trusting Him. But I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes I have potato chips and I just like pour it down on the grass so the birds can eat, whatever. The, 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 those black birds, I always feed them. If y'all didn't know about those black birds, the people, I used to be scared of them. I forgot what they're called. But I used to be afraid of them until I read about them. They're the most, they, those birds are discerners. They either come to warn you or come to bless you. They don't look like it. They look very scary. But they always come. When they come, it's because they're coming for a reason. And when you mistreat crows. Thank you. Crows and ravens. Yes. They're ravens. And when you mistreat them, I read about them crows, boy, because I was afraid of them. I'm not going to lie. I was scared of them things. I would be like, Lord, don't let them attack me. And I've read about them. And they have the most greatest discernment you can ever think about. They're discerned. If you treat them bad, they ain't going to forget it. They, their memory, 
They're, they got the memory that if you treat them bad, they remember your face. They remember you. So, you know, I go out there and I try to feed them birds. I'm like, no, nope, I ain't finna mistreat these birds. I try to feed them. I try to be nice to them. And they're very smart. Yes. Yes, Christopher, Pastor Christopher. They are intelligent. Very intelligent. But I used to be afraid. Now when they come, I just be talking to them. I'm like, hey, want some food? Because <laughs> I was afraid of them. But because, oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Woo, God just gave me something just by talking about them crows. Some of us are afraid of the unseen. Yes, I thought they were demonic too. I did. I ain't going to lie. But the Lord just dropped something in my spirit. We are afraid of the unseen. Because we don't see what's coming or we don't see it happening, we, we, we fearful. Let me use an example. This is the only example I know how to use. Well, I got a couple examples. Someone gets sick out of the blue. And the first thing the enemy going to do, she, he said, I throw fruits and vegetables into my canyon birds and raccoon scores. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. So they can eat. God bless you, toy, toy. God bless you. Yes. So God just gave me something about the ravens just now while we were talking. I used to be afraid of them crows. I did. So now I feed them and I talk to them. But what the Lord just, just dropped in my spirit is that some of us are afraid of the unknown. And that's why we're not stepping out by faith because we are afraid to fail. We're afraid it's not going to work. Or we are afraid of the outcome. Why are you afraid of the outcome when God already told you you are more than a conqueror? You are more than a conqueror. Why are you afraid? And God says, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, they shall be condemned. Why are you afraid when God said, a thousand may fall at your side, but 10,000 at your right hand. But it shall not come near your dwelling. Because the Israelites, on the Bible study yesterday, the Israelites were afraid of the Philistines. They were so afraid of the Philistines. Them Philistines killed 30,000 Israelites. But when they repented and turned their lives over to Jesus, they repented. Uh, Samuel went and, 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 and sacrificed and, and, and prayed in the mountains for them. And God forgave them. And when the Philistines came back to try to destroy them, they all got destroyed. But when the fear plays another mind game on you, having you thinking that what it I did, what did I do? Yes. And that's making you go crazy. Exactly. And as he says, he saw, he thought it was off. Okay. Okay, because they have a sixth sense and the evil one and which has used their knowledge. Exactly. The crows, because they're smart. Um, it says COVID should have taught everyone to trust on God and not on their plans. People will advance, okay, advanced degrees and high paying jobs, lost things, some including their life. Most all, all these people, you know, CEOs and all kinds of people don't lost their job in life. Because you know why? Because they were dependent on things and not God. So what I hear God saying is, don't be afraid to move forward. Don't be afraid because fear is false evidence appearing real. Fear is false evidence appearing real. It's not real. So what the enemy does is he put fear. He makes you fearful. Oh, you can't pay your rent. Oh, what you going to do? You can't pay your light bill. Da, 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 da. This, that, and the other. That, that, and the other. But if you got favor in your life, it doesn't matter what's going on. God going to have favor and he's going to make a way for you. It doesn't matter. We have to walk by faith. This is a time we're living in. If you ain't walking by faith, you're going to have problems. It's going to be hard. And don't, and Fear. It doesn't matter what the devil's doing right now. It may look so bad. It may look like everything is falling apart. But God can change that in a second, a minute. He can change it. He can turn your darkness into light in the, minute, in the, in, in the midst of a second. He wants you to believe him. 
He wants you to trust him. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I thought something was wrong. I'm, it's okay. And honestly, if you are living right and have wisdom and God will tell you and show you things so you just don't, that's right. That's right. That's right. And show you things just have to follow the opportunity. That's right. That's right. I'm telling you, God is a good God. We don't have to fear. Don't fear. Because that's what the enemy does. I mean, he, he brings fear. Fear is the worst, your worst enemy. Remember that. Fear is your worst enemy. Because when you're fearing God, I mean, when you're fearing, when you're fearing, that means that you don't believe God. Fear is the beginning of wisdom and fear can also destroy you. You cannot live off of fear. That's, that's a no, no. Or the devil say, no, don't go. It's a trick. Yeah, he'll, he'll do anything, but you have to hear God. You have to know when it's God and when it's not. Cause sometimes God will say, don't do it because <clears throat> it's a reason. Or he'll say, don't bless them. Ain't you, you've been blessing him all the time. Stop blessing him. Now, why will God do that? Why will God tell somebody not to bless somebody? And the Bible says it's better to give than to receive. Be a blessing. A ble it's better to be a blessing than to receive a blessing. Why? That's what I'm saying. You got to go through the word. You know, you got to check the word. Check the word so that way you, you know that it's God. Father, in any way, I have fallen short of your glory. And then we talked about God's glory. Do you see what God is doing? He went from, he went from, from us gossiping and repenting, then repenting forgiveness, asking for forgiveness. Then he went for the glory of God. And now he said, he's going to pour you out a blessing. You have enough room to receive. Yeah, it don't matter about no, uh, uh, I mean, he'll tell you, I mean, if it's God, he's going to make a way. It says, yes, I have seen God tell people bad credit, go, say, go into this dealership and they are going to give you your car. No questions asked. That person walk out of the dealership with the exact car they wanted with a good interest rate. See, it, God can, God can do that, but you got to hear him and move when he say move. Cause sometimes God will tell us to move and we don't move. And then we miss out on our blessing. Then we get mad. Why, why, why? Did you move when he tell you to move? Did you give when he told you to give? No. Father, in any way we have fallen short of your glory and ex expectations, please have mercy and forgive us in Jesus' name. Father, please give us the grace to always obey and hearken unto your voice. And as I do, let your blessings pursue and overtake us in Jesus' name. Father, please Give us a generous and large heart towards your kingdom business and towards pastors and missionaries laboring day and night in your vineyard in Jesus' name. For those that want to be pastors, you're going to be laboring day and night. <laughs> I don't care what time it is. Somebody may call you at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, I'm asleep. I ain't answering the phone. No, you better answer that phone because that's your job. You accepted the job as a pastor. You better pick up that phone and answer it. On both of my cars, I, I waited until God said, move and prayed. Bam, got that deal. You see? It says, but if you have to move, when God tells you to, like you said, the op um, it says he opens that window of opportunity. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. That's the kind of God we serve. He's a good God. Everybody want to be a pastor and a leader? Get ready. You're going to be in that vineyard. And when people call you in the middle of the night, don't be getting mad. Oh, I'm not going to answer this phone call because it's too late. No, you signed up for it. That's your job. You signed up for it. Do your job. And don't complain. For God snatch it and give it to somebody else. What blows my mind is how people slack regarding to God. But they will go above and beyond for their boss and the gym. Uh-huh. And their friends and the club, the bar, and etc. And it's so true. It's so true. But they want to slack on God. But God going to slack on them. I promise you. He going to slack on them like they slacking on God. You can't slack on God and think that God's not. You know, come on. Come on. Father, please put into our hands the seeds to sow into the vineyard. 
and also give us the grace to resist every temptation to eat them in Jesus' name. People be eating their seed. Okay, so one time, time and money will show where people's to, uh, dedication is. Ask someone how much money and time they gave to God and versus other stuff. It's, it, it, yeah, it's an easy test. They don't want to spend time with God. They want to do what they want to do. Father, as I give to your cause, uh, please let me receive. And as I sow seeds into your vineyard, let me reap bountifully harvest in Jesus' name. Father, please let, this is a, a, a divine, what I'm reading today is scriptures on divine blessings for you. Divine. This is what God is going to do for you according to Deuteronomy 2, 28 and 2. Father, please let me never lack the seed to sow into your kingdom that I may access your divine blessings in Jesus' name. Father, please empower us to always take steps and actions towards actual, exercising, I mean, see, Actually, wait, I can't even say this. It says actualizing, I'm sorry, actualizing and accessing your divine blessings in Jesus' name. Father, please give us the grace to always honor you with substance and first fruit of all our increase that my barns may be filled with plenty and my press burst out with new wants. In Jesus' name. Because God said today, the blessings of the Lord make it rich, adding no sorrow. God is up to something. He's up to something. It says because he is building us back up, back to who we are because of what we've been through. Because he sees the tricks of the enemy. Of course, the tricks of the enemy. But he's um, a hundred showing us um, who he is. And he, uh, it says, showing who he is. Hey, lady, didn't ask to be a leader or pass exactly. I, I, I'm telling you, we didn't ask. I know that. None of us have. But if it's on you, it's on you. There's nothing you can do about it. Some people slack on God because they are visual and they do not see God around them. Sometimes it is out of sight. It says out of sight, out of mind on different levels from a low spectrum to extreme. It is extreme when the Bible says when the when they knew God they did not glorify him as God. Exactly. Yeah, some of us did not ask for this. I'm telling you. I, I did. Let me tell you something. I did not know I didn't ask for it. I was an intercessor and I was happy being an intercessor. But if it's on you, it's on you. It's nothing you can do about it. If he calls you to be a pastor, that's who you are. And you know who you are, uh, uh, Pastor Cynthia, because you knew who you were when you asked for the shirt. You already knew. You, God already spoke to you. So you already know. So it, it, it's not that we ask for it, it's that God is calling. But I'm saying there are people, let me tell you, there's people in the church that they, they, they thrive and they thirst for, for, for validation and they thirst for, for uh, uh, positions because they think that's going to make them big. That ain't going to make you no big or nothing. What's going what's gonna to keep, let me tell you something, you better stay close to God. You better stay Stay in his glory and stay faithful and stay prayed up. That's what's going to help you get through. It ain't no title going to help you get nowhere. It's, it's, a title, it's, a, it's a title that God gave you because of what you've been through, everything that you've been through, you suffer through, and he built you up to become that leader, that leader to, to minister his, to his people. That's what he's done. But you really still, it's, it's not nothing to brag about. It's not nothing for us to go around saying, I'm a pastor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good. And? You a pastor, you can still fall. You a pastor, you can still come short of God's glory. You a pastor, and it doesn't matter. You can still do wrong. It don't matter. Because you got a title. But see, the problem, the, the world, what the world's seeing is a bunch of phony stuff and fake stuff instead of us being real and telling them we're going to fall too. We're going to mess up too. But we have God as an advocate that prays for us. And we, we, this is this was the, going on, been going on for a long time. Because we... Don't want to show our, the truth about who we really are. We want to put on a front. And the world knows. The world can see better than us. And the world is looking at them like, man, didn't I just see you at the, at the store buying, buying a, a, a beer? But we want to act like we're so perfect. And that's why the world is looking at us like we're stupid. Let's just keep it 100. Because we can't be real. We can't be real about we're going to fall. We're going to make mistakes. We're not going to be perfect. It's going to be things that's going to happen that we are going to fall. But I promise you, with Jesus on your side, you're going to get 
back up and you're going to keep on moving. Matthew 7 and 22 says, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and your name? It says in your name. God bless you, uh, uh, Pastor Althea. God bless you. Prophetess. It says not prophesy in your name and in your name. Uh, it says in your name, drive out demons in your name, perform many miracles. Yes. And pastor showed me many will say that not a few. They did God's work and still didn't make it in. And I'm telling you, it's going to happen because you know why? Because people don't want to be real. Just be real. Because I'm telling you, you're not fooling the world. They're not blind. Okay. They can see. And I, pr I promise you, some of them can probably call you out. Oh, he in there. What? what? Look at him. He's singing. Look at him. He on the mic and he tearing it down. But didn't I just sing you at the club last night? That's embarrassing. The spotlight of leading God's people is bright. It sure is. There should be no quality assurance check in your hearts. Every, everything, every time we do, every time we do anything less than God's quality, the light should shine on that act and we should repent. That's right. You can, you can hide from people, but you can't hide from God. That's why I just go on and say it because he know it anyway. And Satan ain't going to blackmail me because he's a good, he's a blackmailer. I'm telling you, he'll use people to blackmail you. When I say Satan, I'm saying Satan will use people to blackmail you. So if I'm telling on myself, then what you going to do? Who you going to tell? Because I'll tell the pastor before you. I'll tell him before you can tell him. Because again, I say this all the time. I don't have a hell of heaven to put anybody in. I don't. All I can do is minister to them. Listen to them. Give them the advice that God tells me to give them. But I have no hell of heaven to put anybody in. And ain't nobody got no hell of heaven to put me in. So what you think about me don't matter. Because when I look in the mirror, I ask God to show me me. I ask God to show me me and I ask God to clean me. If there's something in me that needs to be out of me, I ask God to take it out of me. Because my first account, my, my account, my first accountability is to me asking God to clean me up. Not to clean everybody else up. And I'm dirty. Can nobody tell your story but you. I'm going to have to put that on the shirt. Ooh, Jesus. Says, can nobody tell my story but like me? Ooh, I'm going to put that on the shirt. Ooh. Let me write that down before I forget because I forget. Yeah, I'm going to put that on the shirt. I promise you. And I didn't forget about your shirt, Sandra. I have to order those two things that you asked me. I have not forgotten. So if you think I forgot I'd have it, I have not. I got you, girl. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna put that on the shirt. Can nobody tell you my story like me? I know that's right. I bet this is going on the shirt. Yes, it is. But I'm just I'm just saying, you guys, we 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 have to take an accountability for our own sin, for our own mistakes, for our own falling. It, it's not going in in the house of God and pointing fingers. Because who are you? You don't like me. You don't even know why you don't like me. Some people don't like you and don't even know why they don't like you. They just don't like you because the light. Oh, the light is too bright. The light is bright. And when your light is bright, it bothers the enemy. It bothers the enemy. Because what do light and darkness got anything to do with each other? The devil don't like the light. It bothers them. And then, too, some people be thinking that you know everything that's going on in their life. And that, let me tell you something. And it ain't true because it was times I was out there doing what I was doing. And then I would go to church and be looking like, oh, my God, do they know where I was? Did they know what I did? They do that. You know, the devil be making you think that everybody knows what's going on. And it don't be like that because some things God ain't going to tell. But we be going to church thinking, oh, man, they know I did it. Did they know I was... When it came last night, are they picking this up on me? No, they're not. 
unless God is ready to deliver you or you want to, and you want to be delivered, then, they, then that's a different story. But God ain't going to just tell people. And some things, if he do tell somebody a prophet something, they, and it is, they're supposed to tell you quietly in your ear if it's something that's, um, God bless you, uh, Jameer Simpson. God bless you, Jameer. Look at Jameer. Jameer's on here. God bless you. Um, God ain't just going to do that. And I'm telling you, people be going to church, doing their mess seven days a week, and then go to church and be scared that somebody going to call them out. God, ain't, God is not that kind of God. Now, there is times when he been, if he's been talking to you for a long time, he may bust you out. But he, he, he talked to you first a couple of times before he busted you out. He ain't going to just bust you out. He's going to bust you out if he keep telling you to do something and you won't do it. If he keep telling you to do it and you won't do it, he's going to eventually bust you out. I'm sorry, he's going to do it. I'm telling you what I know. He's going to bust you out. He's going to do it. I done seen him do it. I done seen it happen. He'll bust you out. But don't let it get to that point. Just go to him and get it right. God will not embarrass his people unless you're not being obedient after he warns you several times. Yes, because he, he, he'll warn you a few times. He ain't just going to do it right away. He's going to tell you a few times, and then if you're still doing the same thing, then hey, hey, he about to, he about to put the belt, he about to pull the belt out on you. Then he might expose you. Yes, he will. I always pray for you, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you so much. God is a good God. I'm telling you, God is a good God. He don't play games. But he loves us enough to cover us. He covers us. He covers our, our sin because he loves us. But if you're in a leadership position, you shouldn't be out there playing. No. Matter of fact, let me take that back. If you are, if you in, saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, you ain't got no business out there playing. This ain't the time. You might be, this, this ain't the time to be playing with God. I'm telling you, you might just, just play for one last time and never come back. We don't know. Each day, we don't know if we're going to come back home. We might leave today, out this door, I, I might leave today. And who's to say? I, you, we don't know. That's why you got to live right every day. That's why God says to, you know, pray without ceasing. Pray so you can know what's going on. So you can know God can give you answers to things because we don't know. We could be here today and going tomorrow. It says, Father, please bless your son. Bless your sons and daughters. Bless your sons and daughters irreversibly in Jesus' name. Your sons and your daughters. Father, please bless everyone that you have been using to prepare us to do your work. Beyond measure and all those who have been broadcasting who's been on on here working who's been praying silently who may not be on facebook but they're still praying bless them father please let every challenge hindrance and obstacle of getting our prayers out across for your children timely and daily based on your goodness we pray with everybody using the open heavens daily devotion prayer Please give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding to obey commandments and unquestionable obedience to maximize the divine blessings of obedience in the mighty name of Jesus. The whole thing is about obedience. The only thing is about obedience, the blessings. Everything is leading up to today. Repenting for gossiping, the forgiveness, the glory of God, and now the blessings. It, it was just set that way. That's how he said it. Hallelujah, Father. We just thank you, Father. We just thank you. We bless the Almighty God for bringing us to the second quarter of, of, of 2022 because we are almost, almost gone. To, to, we're already half, almost halfway there. Time is flying. God said in Genesis 9 and 9, And as for me, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you. So if God says he's going to save you, he's going to save your descendants. Also in Judges 2 and 1 says, he said, I will never break my covenant with you. He will never break his covenant with you. If the covenant has been broken, it's because you broke it, not him. He will never break the covenant. Never. He'll never break the covenant. Hallelujah, God, you are a good God. 
We thank you this morning. We magnify you. We bless you this morning for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. We thank you this morning, Father, for your mercy and your grace. For we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for how you're blessing us today, Father. How you're going to be blessing us this whole entire week. And you said the blessings of the Lord make it rich, adding no sorrow. So if you said it, you have a plan. You got something planned. And sometimes God don't reveal his plan, but he got something planned. He's got something planned for the people. Hallelujah. Jabez prayer. Every, uh, Heavenly Father, we call on the God of Israel saying, oh, that you will bless us indeed and enlarge our territory, that your hand will be with us and that you will keep us from evil and that we may not cause pain. Father God, I ask you to grant us what we have requested the way you did for Jabez. According to 1 Chronicles 9, 4, 9 and 10, we decree in it so that God is going to do what he said for Jabez for us. We ask you that you would keep your angels of protection around us. We ask you to bless every pastor, every missionary, every uh, intercessor, Father God, every evangelist. Father God, we ask you that you will move for them, every bishop, God, in the name of Jesus, every apostle. Father, I pray that you will watch over them, that you will put your angels in, in camping around and about them, Father God. Watch over your intercessors like never before, oh God, in the name of Jesus, because they go into the warfare for, for in the behalf of the people. I pray that you will protect them, God. In the name of Jesus, that you keep your angels around them, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Father God, that we are going to be standing on your word no matter what comes. We're going to stand on your word and believe you for the impossible because you are God of miracles and a God of impossibilities. That's who you are. We thank you for those that are in the prison. We thank you for turning their lives around. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for saving the, the workers, the sheriff's department, those that are working in the prison. I thank you, Father, that they're turn, that you turn their hearts uh, to you, oh God, give them, give them grace and mercy, God. And Father God, I pray for them to get, uh, give them compassion for those that are in the prison. Give them compassion in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we thank you. We pray for nurses, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That they will have compassion on those that are sick. That they will be patient, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. That they will be there for them. That they will watch over them, Father God. They will not get so easily angered. And they will be not so easily to, 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 to disregard their job. But I pray that you will give them strength, Father, as they go to work every day, Father God. Because that's a hard job to do. To go in every day and take care of somebody who's sick god do look over them bless them oh god bless them this morning bless them jesus the teachers that are in school father that's teaching the, the kids oh god give them strength father oh god give them strength too they have to deal with some of them kids and some of them kids is bad as you say to tell the truth some of them kids is not right lord but i'm asking you that you will help them too that you will give them grace and mercy bless them Bless the teachers. Bless our children this weekend. Bless them. Give them favor. Each and every person that's on this virtual room, that's on here now and that's coming later, I bless their life. I bless their finances. I bless their home. I bless their going in and they're coming out. They're the head and out, the tail and above and out beneath. They're blessed in the city and blessed in the field. You're giving them power to obtain wealth. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're going to set a table before them in the presence of their enemies. Let them know they don't have to worry about their enemies because God sees everything. There's nothing that God doesn't see. They're not going to win. They're going to come one way and they're going to flee seven different ways. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord. Let him fight your battle because he can do it better than you can. If somebody's playing you, using you, manipulating you, or doing anything, don't you worry about that. They're going to have to reap what they sow. You ain't got to worry about that. As long as you're doing what the Lord's telling you to do, you ain't got to worry about that. They're going to have to pay the pipe. They're going to have to pay. The word of God says you reap what you sow. So if they're doing that and they're sowing that mess, they're going to reap that same mess they're sowing. So you ain't got to worry about it. Oh, they, I feel like they're using me. That's okay. As long as you're obeying God and doing what he told you to do, don't you worry about it. God got their name, their number, and their addresses. And he knows exactly what he needs to do with them. You bless them, bless and curse not. The Bible says bless them that persecute you, bless them that use you, bless them. Because some battles we cannot fight. Some battles we cannot fight. The battle my son is in, it's not, that battle is too big for me. I, I, that battle is, it, 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 it's too big. I can't fight that battle. That battle has to be fought by God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Father. 
We thank you for your blessings this morning. We thank you for how you're going to move by your spirit even now. I pray that you return back every seed that was planted, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Every seed that was planted, I ask you to return it back to your people. Thank you, Father, for your mercy, your grace, and your love and compassion. Thank you for teaching us every day, God, because I'm learning too. Thank you for teaching me how to become more like you. Become more like you. Thank you, Father. We give you glory and honor this morning. We bless you. Thank you, Father. We come against all accidents. We come against uh, 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 accidents in a road. We come against um, rage, rage, ro uh, rage driving. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Road rage. We come against road rage this morning. Premature deaths. We come against premature deaths and our families. Premature that we cancel your assignment in the name of Jesus. We come against accidents, not only car accidents, but any type of accident, falls, anything. We come against it this morning. We plead the blood and we ask you to protect us. Put your angels around us. We're overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. And we are not going to be defeated. We are healed. We are not sick. We are blessed. We are not cursed. To give us favor. Unlimited favor today. Give us unlimited favor with everyone we come in contact with, Jesus. Oh, God, keep us, protect us. Bless our neighbors. Protect our neighborhoods. Protect our neighborhoods. Protect our neighborhoods today, God. Protect those that are homeless out there, sleeping uh, downtown. Protect them. Protect those that are going before the judges and, be, and before these old liars, DAs. I said it. Liars. Manipulators. Jesus. Father, go into them courtrooms. Walk up and down them courtrooms. Walk up and down juvenile hall. Walk up and down children's hospital. Look on every foster child. Expose every abuser. Father, and I'm asking you, Father God, that you will continue to rain your glory and your blessings on the Ukraines. That you will continue to send your warring angels to fight on their behalf. I pray, Father God, that they will make it through this. Whatever it is that they're going through, that they will make it through this. Their children will make it through it. Their children will not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. That the husbands will not die. But they will go home to their wives. Father, bring this thing to an end at your appointed time. At your appointed time. Because we're not going to tell you what to do. Because you are in control of everything. But we thank you. We thank you for our government. We thank you for our president. God, help them to make the right decisions concerning our lives. God, you be the shepherd of their lives in Jesus' name. Save them sanctify them and fill them with your Holy Ghost Father in the name of Jesus yes Lord help us to walk in your Holy Spirit daily and love and love with your character and agape love yes help us help us Father help us in Jesus name we pray God we thank you we magnify you we glorify your name this morning we thank you for everything that you're going to do for us Father God, and we thank you for those, Father, that don't know you, that wants to come to you, that want to give their life over to you. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe that, believe in thy heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter how long you've been in a cult. It doesn't matter how long you've been working for Satan. You can be forgiven. God will forgive you and give you peace, joy, happiness, fill you with the love, restore you back to the person you really supposed to be. It doesn't matter what you've done. I promise you God will take you in. His arms is open waiting for you to repent. Amen. So God bless you guys this morning. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to try to start my, I still don't know if I want to start my church on Saturday morning or Sunday morning. So I don't know yet. I'm still waiting on God for the answer. I really am. 
Um, but as soon as he lets me know, I'll let you guys know because I will be starting um, church soon on either Saturday or Sunday. But I know for sure he already started my Bible study on Thursday. I don't know if that's a good day for everybody because I don't know. You guys let me know if that's a good day. But I know on Thursdays at 7 o'clock I do Bible studies. Um, and it's really, it's really been good. I've been learning from it myself. So if you guys come out on Thursday nights at 7 p.m., we're doing Bible study. It's only from 7 to 8. And we're going to do whatever God wants us to do. If God wants us to prophesy, if God wants us to, to, to speak into your life, we're going to do whatever he wants us to do. Amen. But I already spoke over your life and I said, you're blessed going in and you're blessed going out. You're the head and not the telling you above, not beneath. You're blessed and you're covered and you're protected. Till we see each other again, we are blessed every day and we're protected. Amen. It says he is, he will, and let go of the past, a new season and a new day. Yes, absolutely. It says, I can't log on because my church Bible study is on the same day and time. Oh, you got Bible study on Thursdays. Okay. Okay. That's, I understand. It's okay. If you, you know, I understand. You got to, you got to be, you got to be, uh, 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 you got to be responsible and accountable to your church. But I do tell people, oh, thank you. But you do have to go to your church. You got to be, uh, first, uh, you know, be there for your church. Be faithful to your, your church first. Amen. So God bless you guys. God bless you. And I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Blessings, everyone. I have a beautiful blessing of a prosperity and thanksgiving of a day. God bless you too, Pastor uh, Crystal. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor Cynthia and Crystal and, and, and uh, Prophetess uh, Sandra, Pastor Robert. Hallelujah. Jesus, God bless you. Women of God, Patricia uh, Segrets and um, Brittany, God bless you. God bless you, Prophetess Brittany. God bless you. God bless you, uh, Pastor Sharon. God bless you, Pastor Christopher Andrew. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, Jamar. God bless you this morning. God bless you. May God bless you and keep you all week. And God bless you, Althea. God bless you, woman of God, Floranda, Pastor Floranda. God bless you. God bless you this morning. God bless you this morning. Each and every you have a blessed and wonderful day. Amen. You guys keeping me in your prayer if I come. Oh, God bless you, Pastor Carmen. God bless you, Pastor.